In the mountains of Virginia and West Virginia, small streams tumble through hollows choked with hardwoods and laurel. In the valleys, creeks are born at gurgling limestone springs. These are pretty streams, cold, clear, home to wild trout. Generations ago, there were trophy-sized native brook trout here. Thick, brightly colored char, best measured in pounds, not inches. But as our nation grew, the health of these creeks and these trout was an afterthought. We're improving these streams. Projects are reducing erosion, reconnecting fragmented stream sections, improving fish habitat, making fishing better. This impact reaches beyond these mountains. These are the headwaters of the Potomac, one of the most important rivers in the east, the key artery in a watershed that supplies drinking water for roughly 12 million people. Yes, the projects in these mountains are about helping trout, but the work is about so much more. So when you think about it, TU has a really narrow mission, right? It's just it's about trout and salmon. But the fact is that everything we do on the landscape affects water. Probably 20, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when we were first founded, uh, the organization would focus on the point of impact. And then over time, we moved from that sort of stream-by-stream -stream approach to a watershed approach, where the idea was, hey, let's stop putting these Band-Aids on problems, and instead, let's actually solve the problem. And now we've realized that we have to work at scale. This river has gotten so much better directly as a result of the Clean Water Act. The reason it's gotten better is that in the headwaters of the Potomac, up in places like West Virginia, we've cleaned up those small streams. So the, the streams that are supplying the cold, clean water into the Potomac are much healthier than they used to be. Folks in West Virginia like to, to deer hunt, and dig ramps, and catch brook trout. Because they are so inspirational, I think folks are more willing to, to jump on board and, and to try to do something to conserve a species we're all so passionate about. You know, the brook trout serve as this, this indicator species for us. And these farmers have long-term relationships with these properties. You know, they intimately manage that land. And so a lot of the farmers themselves have watched the brook trout populations decline. And so we use that as a surrogate for the water quality. What we do is we work with landowners to make conservation an easy choice by essentially providing a one-stop shop to deliver conservation services that vary from anything from building fence to planting trees and installing alternative water systems to actually restoring the in-stream habitat as some of these streams have incised and the cattle tromp some of the banks. And we start to see uh, stream bank erosion in a lot of these cases where topsoil is being washed down into the Chesapeake Bay. So our farmers don't like to see that and nor do the folks in the bay because it's their livelihood that's essentially being washed downstream. Growing up, you would come through and you would see eight to 10 trout, and catch several trout. You know, and over the years, the pools have gone away and the banks have eroded and, and uh, I was just trying to find a way to uh, try and preserve it, get it back to the way that it used to be. You know, I don't know if that's necessarily possible, but, but with what we've done here, it's really made a big impact on, on what we have. We try to start at the top of the watershed, so we do select our priority locations that are usually your best of the best. You know, we have the best water quality and the best habitat. Um, as it makes its way downstream, it sees the variety of stressors from timber harvest and agriculture and, and development. Um, so we, we start in these headwater communities. We rally around this state fish, you know, that is a heritage species for our people. When people come from Washington, I tell them that you're drinking our water. And, uh, and we've got headwater systems for a lot of the major rivers around here. And for us, when we're working on things like brook trout, we're also working on things that create, create drinking water for folks downstream. I've got this place that I live. 
and, and that's where the landscapes around us are the way they should be. Okay, in other words, they're healthy, they're resilient, they're productive. You know, the, the streams, the forests, the, the open lands are, are vibrant and alive. And then you've got communities around these areas that are also healthy, productive, sustainable. There's a quality of place that's in these communities. And, and what we're looking for, and what we've worked with Trout Unlimited and, uh, and other partners that we work together on, is this codependency between the landscape that's around us and these communities around us as well. Colby and I grew up in Richmond, uh, not too far away, and you know, like a lot of folks that live in the Piedmont, if you want to trout fish, this is this is where you come here to the Shenandoah Valley. So uh, nobody in our family fly fished. We had a little farm pond not too far from our home, and once we had kind of conquered bait fishing it and spin fishing it, um, on our 10th birthday we asked for a fly rod because we wanted a, kind of another challenge. And so we got ourselves into it, we pushed each other through the sport, and as soon as uh, we started figuring that pond out with a fly rod, it was heading to the mountains in Virginia to try and figure out trout. The quality of the fishing here has always has drawn people. The sport's grown, the state has grown, the town has grown, and so the only way to accommodate the growing number of anglers is to open more water to public use and or improve waters to make them more fishable and, and better fisheries. And so certainly that's been happening uh, here in the valley and around the state. And a lot of that is thanks to, to Trout Unlimited. Basically, yeah, build it in, the fish will come. You, you know, actually, yeah, when we're putting in structures and you have a pool, you come back even the next day with the equipment and there's fish in the pool. And then you come back and in the summertime, there's surface water and we're showing in um, increase of fish use in the habitat we're creating. And so the water quality of North River up on the National Forest in the mountains is really critically important for the water quality and habitat for Mossy Creek down here in the valley. Mossy Creek, the area we did the restoration work on, had previously been impounded by a dam. Once that dam was breached in the 1940s, the stream downcut through decades of sediment that had deposited, which, can, which created the stream to be entrenched and wide and couldn't access its floodplain. By creating more floodplain connectivity, we allowed a stream to get out of its banks when it floods, spread out and slow down and deposit sediment out in the floodplain so it's not being deposited on the stream bed. Which in turn means we get cleaner gravel, we get the nutrients that can create pollution for downstream waters in the Chesapeake Bay, depositing the floodplain where plants can uptake those nutrients and grow to create a, an intact riparian buffer. So it's really one of the uh, more rewarding parts of the job is to know that folks are able to come out to a site where you've done restoration work and catch fish where previously it would have been almost impossible or, or very difficult to do. We provided more access for anglers, better habitat for more fish, which means the creek can handle more angling pressure. And so to be able to see folks using that and to hear compliments from them about how great it looks, about how it's never fished like this in 20, 30 years, or it's as good as it's ever been, really, really kind of, you know, puts a feather in the cap of, of the project that you know you've done a good job with it. There's not one person in America, be they parents or not, who would like to pass on a dirtier land legacy to their kids. Right? And, and it's, it's our ability at TU to sort of grab onto that and then to make a long-term commitment that I think distinguishes us from most other conservation groups. I came to Trout Unlimited because my personal mission aligns well with Trout Unlimited's mission. And that's to leave my daughter with a better place than what, what I had growing up. And I came from a family of coal miners you know, that we're extracting our resources and, and using it to the fullest extent. And I always just wanted to, to be able to invest in those. You know, we, we watched some of our trout streams decline over the years down in southern West Virginia. So to be able to see one that has declined actually lift back up is the most gratifying feeling I can say.